It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Chicago Bears. All that and more coming up next. About three inches of the white stuff has fallen, and the prognosticators say still three to five more to come tonight in Chicago as we welcome you to football under the lights at Snowy Soldier Field. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Chicago Bears. With my partner Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, the Chicago Bears, they come off a tough year at 3-14. and 14, The most losses in franchise history. What can they look to build around here in 2023? Well, it starts with their quarterback, and you know that he is a heck of a player for them. But they've got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Head coach, defensive background, he's trying to amass that kind of talent and become the monsters of the midway once again. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq Wollin. And they also struck gold in the offensive line, getting brand new tackles at left and right. Struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie. Yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors, and off we go here at Soldier Field. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. The leading rusher among rookies a season ago. Here's Kenneth Walker. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Now Gino. This is Fant on the short completion. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And maybe they were coming with a blitz that time, and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. The false start backs them up five. First and 15. Here's Smith. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. Just a gain of a couple there, and it's second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Setting up the screen here, this is Walker. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. 
Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Here comes Pettis on the return. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And the Bears take over. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college, and last season, he unleashed it upon the NFL. Ran for over 1,100 yards and would have broken the quarterback's single-season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes, and that's the next jump for him. More consistency as a passer. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 27. In motion left, Claypool. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there, and they'll go backwards right away. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, they, maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Third and long, it's Fields. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. It's early, but it now's a cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games too? Oh, what the heck. And this defense, they're gonna have to find some way to slow him down as this game goes on because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. And he'll go right back to Moore, complete again. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. Heck of a start for him here, Charles, on this opening drive, and they're doing it all through the air. That's four snaps and four passes so far. I do think that there's an argument, Brandon, to maybe mix in a running play or two, but the way that these offenses are constructed, you can get that done with swing passes and checkdowns. The way they're throwing it, I keep pressing it downfield. That's complete right side to commit. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. They put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. So still 14 yards to go, second down. Out of the gun, Fields. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Fields. He's got the connection to Moore. And that was some effort, but it would appear that he's going to come up about a yard short. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. We're scoreless after one. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession as they've got it with fourth down and one. And the first play will be a field goal try. Kicking into a headwind here in the second quarter. Santos' kick is up and through, and it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. 
Knicks out of there able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. Taking it at about the one. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jaquan Brisker. And they have the football, and will take over at the 24-yard line. Well, it's a cold night, and whether you're a quarterback who wears a glove on his throwing hand or not, that ball is a rock, Brandon. You've got to really drive it through the cold and the wind, or it can take off on you. And that may have been what happened there. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. First down, Fields. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Brandon, there have been some memorable snow games for championships in the NFL. 1948, filled up Eagles, Chicago Cardinals. Well, the most famous one in my lifetime, I think, is got to be 01, right? Raiders, Patriots, to send the uh, Patriots to the to Super to, Bowl. You had the to tuck, to the roll. tuck roll, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one people remember. I also know this in Miami, the infamous one, the snowplow game in New England when they went out there and, and the Patriots had a guy come out and clear a spot on the field for their field goal kicker to kick the game winner. Is that 82? That was 82, and the Dolphins fans will never forget it. Well, we're not seeing one of those famous games here, but it's fun to be in the snow nonetheless. To throw his fields. Open man, he finds Kamal. Touchdown, Chicago. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Well, that's just how they do it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free. And his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. The point after, no gimme in the snow, but it's up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. 
solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Now Gino on first down. He completes this to Walker. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Off of play action, here's Smith. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try to mount a stand before they're backed up even further. A shotgun snap for Smith. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Throwing on third down, Smith. He hits his target, Lockett. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. That third down conversion, good for 23. I love that play, because in the snow you think run, run, run. Big passing play there. And defenders hate it, especially in open space, because trying to come under control, break down and make a tackle in the open field, difficult normal conditions in these conditions almost impossible this offense finding its legs now here's another first and ten now it's Smith and his throw here is incomplete I like the calmness of how he played the ball here no panic in his eyes as that throw arrived tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Geno now to throw. Left side complete to lock it. Five yards. Now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Throwing again to Smith. And this is caught at the eight. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get ten here. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments. But that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now for the first and goal. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks are back within a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Myers connects on the PAT, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. And 
after the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Now Jones. Jones now on the return. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. Now the Bears going to take over now late in his first half. And with a little under a minute to go, still time to try to put a drive together to add to their lead should they so choose. First down, it's Fields. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Here's Fields. Complete to Moody on the slam. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Heavy set out there on third and one. Now Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Now a first down throw, Fields. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Fields. surprising you face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. A final shot before the break. Fields. And firing a deep ball for Komet. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The big story thus far has really been the snow. It's made footing treacherous. And if the forecast holds, it's only going to get worse. But I can tell you as a fan, these are the games you love to watch. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The lake effect snow set to continue for the second half of action as we are back underway. This taken in at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Now it's Fields. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Call that a gain of 38. A big march forward on the third down conversion. He just had the feeling that sooner or later someone was going to come up with that one play. Neither team has really done a whole lot offensively, but here's one that pays off to the tune of big yardage, and it's one that could maybe get this group in gear. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Back to throw, Fields. Right side, Claypool has got it. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. A shotgun snap, Fields. Open man, he finds command. Touchdown, Chicago. Great effort there. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Santos now to add the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was all capped off by Cole Komet with a touchdown catch. send the kicking team out there and they will send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now we'll 
we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. They make their second half debut here. Things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that can make this a free possession game. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now Gino. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Thompson. Seven yards there and a first down. A gain of seven. First down on Seattle. Smith. And Walker has it. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It's a gain of 15. First down, Seahawks. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Walker now on first and 10. And down to the 41. Well, it's not time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. From the 41, here's second down and seven. Here's Smith. And that was going to be off target and incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the covers because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Throwing now is Geno. Pass complete. He's got Smith and Jigba. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 19. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. From the red zone now, Smith. And his pass incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They'll fake it. Now Smith. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And they're back with it, a touchdown. It's 17-10. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway.
Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. To throw his fields. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. He was looking to get that one to D.J. Moore. And that'll bring up second down. Fields. Able to hit his target, Claypool. A good pickup, 17 yards and a very first down. He's got to say, no matter what their intention is, they're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. On first and ten, here's Fields. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. And yeah, he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Partner took a while for him to walk onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn up field and make anything out of it. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and seven. Fields now to throw. And pass complete to Moore. That catch puts him right at 100 yards receiving now, and it also gives him a first down. Back to throw again. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I do think it's fair to say they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. On second down, a run with Herbert. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Herbert powering up the middle. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. Yeah. 
Foreman will try to pick it up. And he is going to have the Bears first. And that should be the capper. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets, defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them in just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.